when you speak your truth, does that make you not want to actually speak out and actually keep it as real as you kept it in these interviews? There have been days where I thought to myself, maybe it's just too much trouble. Oh. And then I remember, that's my purpose. And that's their purpose. To make me as uncomfortable as possible. So I won't want to speak. I got to ask lately, Diddy's been swimming in a sea of trouble, with lawsuits crashing around him like a relentless storm. And guess whose name is echoing through the corridors of gossip? Young Miami. She's been at the heart of some juicy rumors about Diddy's escapades in the glitzy world of celebrities. And here's the kicker. She casually dropped a bombshell that Cuba Gooding Jr. might be more involved in Diddy's schemes than anyone ever imagined. It seems he could have been the mastermind behind some of Diddy's most bizarre antics. However, there is another person who could be involved in this messy situation. Oprah. Yeah, that's right. Cat Williams and Jaguar Wright have spoken up about Oprah being in the cahoots with some of the most evil people in Hollywood, and we're here to tell you all about it. What the heck is I run shit? Yeah, nigga. You feel me? I run shit. Good to yeah, you do. Yeah. Little Rod ain't worth giving this kingdom to if we don't control his publishing. I can solve his efforts with three other human beings. He's eating at our table, and I like his backstory, but you need to have other people. We, it's hard to work with him unless we have his pub. He's a piece of shit human but we do not need his talent unless we can work with him all right so check this out one of the producers from diddy's latest hit the love album off the grid is hitting him with a lawsuit that's making everyone's jaws hit the floor we're talking a cool 30 million dollars rodney lil rod jones who was in the mix of creating tunes for diddy's love album is the one dropping this bomb he's been chilling with diddy from september 2022 to september 2023 even hanging out on diddy's yacht but it turns out it wasn't all about laying down tracks according to lil rod he got a front row seat to some seriously dodgy stuff like Diddy and his crew getting into all kinds of shady antics. Lil Rod spilling the beans on things getting way out of hand, from pressure and inappropriate moves to some dicey nights with ladies of the night. Imagine Diddy ruling the roost, making power plays, and swimming in cash while pulling everyone into his whirlwind. And Lil Rod, he says he got done dirty and owed over 50 grand for his work on the album. He's painting a grim picture of the music world, filled with messed up vibes and Diddy trying to drag him into the mess. But here's the kicker. Lil Rod claims he's got solid proof of everything Thing from drug deals, yep, talking ecstasy and coke, to some really iffy stuff with guns, and he doesn't stop there. He's accusing Diddy of handing out spiked drinks to minors and sex workers at his places in California and Florida. But Lil Rod isn't just throwing shade at Diddy, he's calling out the whole entourage, including big names from Universal Music Group's CEO to Diddy's main squeeze and even his son Justin. They're all in the lawsuit. When Lil Rod tried to speak up, he was basically told, that's just Sean being Sean by Diddy's chief of staff. So while working with Diddy, Jones got more than he bargained for, diving deep into a world that stretched way beyond making music. Working on that love album had him bumping elbows with all of Diddy's celebrity buddies. Diddy and his crew getting into all kinds of shady antics. But wait, there's more to this story, and it's not all about the high life, especially when it comes to Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, that Oscar-winning actor. Jones is calling out Gooding Jr. for getting way too close for comfort, talking about some unwelcome groping action. And who else gets pulled into this? Young Miami, who's mentioned in Lil Rod's lawsuit for lighting up with Diddy during Thanksgiving in 2022. Lil Rod didn't stop there. He even mentioned Young Miami's cousin hanging out at Diddy's place in Miami. Now, Diddy's lawyer is hitting back hard, calling Lil Rod a straight-up liar hunting for a big payday with a $30 million lawsuit filled with made-up stories just to grab headlines. They claim to have solid proof that Lil Rod's accusations are bogus and are getting ready to tackle these wild claims in court, pushing back against anyone spreading them. But Lil Rod's not backing down. He's pointing fingers at Gooding Jr. too, trying to shift some heat off himself and onto Diddy. The lawsuit gets into the nitty-gritty, accusing Gooding of touching Lil Rod in all the wrong places, making him super uncomfortable even after Lil Rod pushed him away, Gooding Jr. didn't back off. The lawsuit labels Gooding Jr. as an actor who's lost his way, facing numerous sexual assault allegations and a guilty plea for forcible touching. Now, switching to Cuba, Gooding Jr.'s own Hollywood saga, his story's been anything but smooth. Once a shining star in the late 90s and early 2000s, racking up roles and an Oscar, his reputation took a hit with multiple women coming forward with
with allegations, leading to a steep fall from grace. Fast forward to 2019, and he's in hot water over a bar incident in NYC, with allegations from 14 women nationwide going back to 2011, facing misdemeanor charges for groping incidents. It's been a wild ride for Gooding Jr., with legal battles left and right. Despite settling with an accuser in 2013 to avoid trial and pleading guilty to forcible kissing in 2018, more allegations surfaced in 2019. He's managed to avoid jail time, getting six months of counseling instead, but now faces civil claims for past misconduct under the Adult Survivors Act. It's a roller coaster of legal issues, controversies, and attempts to navigate through a tarnished career. In the swirling vortex of drama that has Cuba Gooding Jr. caught in Diddy's legal turmoil, the plot takes an unexpected twist with the entrance of none other than Oprah Winfrey herself. As the saga unfolds, whispers in the industry suggest that Oprah, with her towering influence and extensive network, might have played a more significant role behind the scenes than anyone could have anticipated. Sources hint at Oprah not just being a bystander, but perhaps even an architect in some of Diddy's more controversial maneuvers. This surprising involvement raises eyebrows, given Oprah's esteemed reputation and her long-standing position as a moral compass in the entertainment world. The idea that she could be entwined in this web of legal and moral complexities alongside Diddy adds a layer of intrigue and speculation. How could America's beloved media mogul find herself mixed up in this? The question on everyone's lips is what part Oprah could have played in aiding Diddy intentionally or not in the escapades that are now seeing the light of day through this explosive lawsuit. So Oprah's been doing her own thing for a bit, but not everyone's cool with it, including 50 Cent. Back in the day, Oprah wasn't vibing with 50's music, calling it out for promoting gun violence on her show. 50, who was just trying to make a name for himself and impress his grandma, was totally shut down by Oprah's diss. 50, in a chat with The Guardian, was like, she's not into my music, so I'm never hitting her show, which kind of means I've made it big. But hey, if we're not gonna be pals, might as well be frenemies, right? And in classic 50 style, he even named his dog Oprah. Fast forward, Oprah and 50 did patch things up briefly, with 50 even scoring that coveted interview spot. But then, drama around Russell Simmons and sexual assault allegations heated up and their truce was over. Despite Simmons clearing his name through a lie detector test, Oprah was planning a docudrama that seemed to point fingers at him still being guilty. 50 wasn't having any of it, blasting Oprah on Instagram for seemingly targeting black men while staying silent on her white pals like Harvey Weinstein. In late December, which she captioned in part, Ms. Oprah has been nothing less than a steady and solid beacon of light to all of the cast of The Color Purple. Fans started questioning, is Oprah only out to expose black actors? Why is she silent on Weinstein? Flash to the present and not much has changed. Oprah's been caught trying to underpay Taraji P. Henson for her role in The Color Purple. Despite Taraji being a big name and speaking out against pay disparities for black women in Hollywood, it seemed Oprah was part of the problem, not the solution. Even more baffling, Taraji had to audition for her role, despite her massive success and being the director's top pick. This move had fans recalling Monique's struggles with Oprah since 2009, painting a picture of Oprah not as the supportive icon many hoped, but as someone who might not always lift up her peers. This whole Oprah saga feels like it's all connected to the bigger picture with Diddy and his own lawsuit drama. It's like a tangled web where power plays, celebrity beef, and allegations crisscross, leaving us wondering about the true dynamics of support and sabotage within the entertainment industry. Way back in 2009, Monique got to team up with Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry for the movie Precious. Monique was buzzing from an Oscar nod that year, and the co-producers wanted to ride that wave by having her do a press tour. The hitch? Monique wouldn't get paid for it. Already worn out from the movie shoot, Monique decided to chill with her family instead of hitting the press circuit, despite Oprah and Tyler asking. At first, they seemed cool with her decision, but then Hollywood gossip started painting Monique as a diva, and soon enough, her career hit a rough patch. Monique felt Oprah was behind the smear campaign. I'm doing right now, baby. You dreamed of this. Just when I tell you, Shannon, from a little girl, I always wanted to be famous. Okay. Because I saw the Jackson 5. Okay. In an interview, Monique was like, look, Oprah, I'm swamped. I've got a talk show, a comedy tour, a husband, kids, and a sliver of downtime that I'm gonna enjoy. So no press tour for me. We agreed to disagree, and the next thing I know, I'm tagged as difficult and hard to work with. But things got even messier. Oprah went ahead and invited Monique's brother to her show. The brother who had harmed Monique. Oprah asked Monique's okay beforehand, but what Monique didn't expect was her whole family showing up on the show too, without 
without her okay. Monique felt utterly betrayed by Oprah, who never even apologized for the ambush. Despite Monique calling for a public apology from Oprah, none came, even after confronting Oprah at events. This whole drama got Monique blacklisted in Hollywood. While some celebs stayed quiet, 50 Cent stood up for Monique, big time. He even scored her a gig on his show BMF's second season, showing real support. Fans are left scratching their heads over Oprah's motives. As a leading figure in the entertainment world, you'd think Oprah would be all about lifting others up, but instead there's chatter about her playing gatekeeper for Hollywood's elite, choosing who gets to succeed and who doesn't. It's a theory that's got people questioning why Oprah's thrived while others in her circle, like Iyanla Van Zant, haven't seen the same level of success. And here's where things get real interesting. Amidst all this drama, whispers around town suggest that Oprah, with her massive influence and strategic moves, might have actually thrown a lifeline to Diddy amidst his own sea of legal battles. It's like, while she's been busy keeping certain folks in check and possibly sidelining others, Oprah's also been playing a bit of a guardian angel to Diddy. Think about it. In a world where Oprah's got the power to lift you up or push you down, her actions or even her silence can speak volumes. While she's been under fire for how she's handled controversies surrounding other big names, there hasn't been much noise from her corner about Diddy's mess. And given her track record, you gotta wonder if her not adding fuel to the fire is her way of keeping Diddy afloat. What do you think about this possibility? Do you think she always knew knew about his dirty secrets, given that she's manipulated many folks to this very day? Let us know all about it in the comments.